What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today I really really wish that Adam and Andy were with me because I'm heading to somewhere spooky and I'm quite sensitive to things of a paranormal nature so I kind of don't want to go alone. Alas, the boys are waiting for parts of their bikes and can't come so I guess I just got to man the fuck up and go by myself. Now the place we're heading to today is called Chito Cero, which is an abandoned ryokan, which basically in English just means Japanese inn. Now the difference between an inn and a hotel is that the inns are more of a place for rest and relaxation rather than just a place to lay your head for the night. So at a Japanese inn you'll find that they don't have normal beds like in a hotel, they've got tatami mats and futons and people usually walk around in a yukata which is kind of like a kimono. Uh, on top of that there's a, there'll be a banquet hall that has the most lavish food, all locally prepared cuisine. Um, there'll be hot baths, public baths that people can use and generally speaking they're always in nice looking beautiful areas so from your bedroom window you'll have an amazing view. So last year I actually stayed in one um, that overlooked the beach but the one we're heading to today is overlooking this river which I think is the Shonaigawa. So the hotel itself opened in 1928 and in the 30s and early 40s it was a super popular place for people from Nagoya to come to. It's got its own train line so it was convenient to come to and only an hour from the city. But after the Second World War, when it became more easy for people to own their own cars, people in Nagoya tended to go a bit further afar and so the Chito Cero kind of went down a bit um, in its esteem. Then in the bubble era in the 80s when everyone had lots of money it became popular again and people started flocking to it. But unfortunately in 2003 the management declared um, file for bankruptcy and the hotel, the inn has been closed ever since then. So the funny thing is the management and the owners basically disappeared after that and the reason that the hotel is still standing today is because the local government can't demolish it because they can't get in touch with the owner. So it's kind of a strange, that's where the story gets, starts to get a little bit strange. Now that's not very spooky I might hear you say and that's true but where it starts to get spooky is around 2008. Now there was a big fire and it destroyed about 200 meters, square meters of the property including the old wooden bathhouse and all the other wooden buildings. And throughout the, this period eight different fires happened and the locals have said that they sort of spontaneously happened. There was never an arsonist found or arrested or anything like that. And these fires just seemed to happen all by themselves. Then in 2012 a body was found on the first floor of the hotel in a seated position and when the police reported it, there it is, they said the body could not be identified and the gender could also not be identified so people started to get a bit freaked out and getting a bit, a bit scared by this place and it became a famous what they call in Japanese a psychic hotspot. Um, now before that had happened there was a very famous psychic in Japan that used to do TV shows and she wrote her own books uh, called Aiko Gabi, I think that was her name, or Gobi, Gobi. Now she um, had planned to do a TV special on this place but when she came here she had a bit of a panic attack and refused to go inside and said she feared for her life got back into her car and drove off so the TV show never happened. Now aside from that People in this area have reported hearing the telephones ringing and the lights coming on and off um, at random and also the voices of people walking around at night time. Now the electricity and the phone lines were cut off from this place a long time ago but still to this day people say that they can hear the telephone ringing. So some say it's the manager calling to check if all the staff are in. Some say oh, I made that bit up. Anyway we're here now so I think it's time to go and have a look around. Now, like I said before, I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, sensitive to psychic stuff and paranormal stuff. So if I feel off, there's no way in hell that I'm going in there, especially by myself. So that's my disclaimer right there. Right, let's go. <laughs> So I decided to uh, stop at the station, let's have a quick look and see what it's like. 
to see if this really is like a, if the station itself has got like an old, you know, like hundred year old vibe to it, but it's sort of a bit decrepit, I guess, but it's just a regular station. But the cool thing is you don't need um, a ticket to get on the platform here. So I've just been having a look around and taking some shots of the trains. Not that I'm a geek or anything, but anyway, um, I'll show you what the surrounding area looks like and then let's move over onto the inn. do now is get the drone up in the air and have a fly around and see if I can find any um, access points that aren't quite so obvious because there's quite a lot of um, people walking by and a few cars coming by so I don't want to get spotted um, but so far my sixth sense is not kicking in and I don't feel like there's some demon in there who wants to steal my soul so that side of things is all good so I think it's time to get the drone up in the air guys that's the uh, end of the day for me um, I just stopped in the coffee shop um, in the little little village there and uh, I tried to record but the owner told me he's sick of asshole youtubers coming in and being noisy and disturbing the other customers while they're trying to have a coffee he probably meets people like me saying what's up YouTube and stuff like that but um, anyway I asked him have you got any like spooky stories about the place and um, he said no you see, he hasn't got any ghost stories or anything scary, nothing scary has happened to him. But he did tell me an interesting story about um, some high school kids a few months ago got arrested there because they broke in. They were kind of like doing a dare. And I said to, them, said to him, well, what happened to them then? He said, nothing, because they couldn't be prosecuted because they can't contact the owner. So that's essentially given me the green card to go in because I think we can maybe be arrested but we can't be prosecuted so yeah maybe we'll just get told off spend a couple of hours in the nick but we should be able to get in and make a wicked video so i think as long as annie and adam are up for it 
um, I think we'll, we will be back. So a bit like the Cosworth video, there will be a part two to this. So guys, um, that's it from for, for today. That's uh, a quick visit to Chito Cerro. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done already, please do subscribe. All right, guys, love you all. Peace. Thank you.